My name is Dave Young, Director and Founder of U.S. Fighting Systems. I have over 30 years of combined training and experience as a police officer, a corrections officer, and a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. The topic we're going to discuss is directed for kids between 13 years of age as up to 80 years old. And let's face it, a teenager brings a whole new different set of responsibilities. And the older you get, sometimes we're kind of not sure on what our responsibilities are. So let's discuss the two types of emergencies you can run into living in your house either by yourself or with roommates or living with a, either another member of the home. Let's talk about the medical emergency. Now, as you get older and you get into middle school and high school, they usually have a first responders class and they talk about airway, breathing, circulation. We're not going to talk about any medical information because I'm really not a doctor. But as a police trainer with a lot of experience, I've seen my fair share of students that have had to provide immediate first care for. And that's what we're really talking about. Let's talk about the medical emergency where the person you're coming into contact with is unconscious. The first thing we want you to do is run over there and make sure they're safe. They could have slipped and fell. We grab their shoulders. Normally we shake them firmly and squeeze the shoulders to kind of give some stimulants to the body. And we normally say, sir, ma'am, are you okay? Sir, are you okay? And try to say this a few times just to see if you can kind of jar them back to life. Also, they might become conscious, but they're not aware of what's going on. If you can get them breathing on your own, that's really good to do. But if you can't get them to be responsive or you're not sure what's wrong with them once you've made an attempt, you got to pick up the phone and call 911. But 911 can be very different for others. If you call 911, it goes to a dispatch center and then gets sent out to the different areas. I would find the emergency contact number for your city of your police department in your area. Find out the exact number and program it on the first redial on your phone. And then make sure that all the kids teenagers, young adults, and even the older ones too, know exactly what to say. And it might go something like this. When the operator picks up the phone, they'll say, hello, my name is, I'm dispatch operator number so-and-so. Is this an emergency? You'll say, yes, this is an emergency. My mother or father is unconscious. My name is, I am 20 years old, I am 13 years old, I'm by myself. They're unresponsive. Please send assistance now. And then she's going to go through a series of questions that are meant to really keep you calm. They're really not meant to do anything else because at that time, once she gets your address and she verifies it, she's going to have medical assistance coming to your location. So I want you to remain calm. And that takes a lot of practice. So we're going to try breathing in through our mouth, out through our nose, and listening to the instructions that they give us on the phone. Remember, don't let panic be the reason why you couldn't provide safety and care. Listen very carefully so you can follow instructions and be part of the solution. So you want to role play this a little bit. You know, when I had, um, my kids were getting older, we have five boys and a girl, and when they all got to be a certain age, when they can make a phone call to a friend's house, I made sure they knew what to say. You know, uh, sometimes kids think if they call a number and say hello, the other person is supposed to know exactly what they're supposed to be saying. So you want to role play with them. So let's do a little role play exercise with calling the emergency line at your local police department and reporting a medical emergency. I recommend that you always turn your back so you're not looking at each other. It makes them nervous, they kind of lose focus. And we'll role play like this if I was the parent. Okay, Mark, remember, I'm gonna, you're gonna call 911 and I'm gonna be the dispatch operator. The phone is ringing. Hello, my name is Dave. Is this an emergency? And your child should go something like this. Yes, this is an emergency. My mother or father, they are unconscious. I am 13 years old, 14 years old. I am by myself. I cannot wake them up. Can you please send medical assistance now? And then listen very carefully to the information that the dispatch operator will give you. They might ask you to describe your home, give a street address. You might have to know a cross street. So the smaller you are, the less information you have to know about your location. But the bigger you are, you should help them try to find your exact location so they can get to you in the right amount of time. Now that's a medical emergency. Now we have the personal safety emergency where you're by yourself at the house. You hear someone knock on the door. Most of the time when we get into our teens, we think we're a little older, we can verbally challenge them at the door. I recommend you don't verbally challenge anybody at the door, but you listen. If it's a person with honorable intentions, they're a friend of the families, they're gonna knock on that door and say, hello. Don, Dave, are you home? It's Jeff. But they're not going to check the doorknob. After they try to verbally announce themselves, they might back up and call the, call the cell phone, call your house. They'll hear the phone ringing. 
Don't pick up the phone because then you'll let that person know you're in the house. If you're supposed to be in the house by yourself to keep yourself safe, don't write a check your body can't cash. Have a role play with your parents on exactly what to say to a friend. But if you haven't been introduced to that person, don't carry on a long conversation. Don't verbally challenge them at the door. Let them think nobody's home. And then if they quit knocking on the door and they end up going to the back of the house, make sure you follow them. Make sure you watch them. Keep eye contact with them. And if they check that doorknob and you haven't already called 911, you have three options. You call 911 or find a place to hide. After you find a place to hide, you got to find a place to go after the house, get out of the house, go to a neighbor's house, uh, go someplace that you've rehearsed what to say to them, and then go someplace that you know that when the cops can get there, you can make contact with them and make sure you give them all the information that you need. It's a scary experience, but if you practice it, you should be ready for it when the time comes. For more information, go to www.usfightingsystems.com.